Hey guys, it's Lord of the Pogs. This is my new Iron Maiden shirt. We saw them perform in Spokane, Washington last week, and it was awesome. Okay, so every generation, and every decade for that matter, has their defining moments that later generations don't understand. The 20s had the stock market crash and the Great Depression. The 70s had the Watergate scandal. My mom used to tell me that she remembered exactly where she was and what she was doing when she heard that John F. Kennedy was shot, and I remember thinking to myself, there is no way you can recall such a thing with such detail that occurred 30 years ago, especially when you were only 8 years old at the time. Well, here we are in 2022, and I still remember September 11th, 2001 like it was yesterday. There is no way to convey the sensation of carrying such a thing with you. I had to experience it for myself. Kids these days will never experience the hype surrounding the Blair Witch Project when it came out. There has been found footage films since Blair Witch, like Cloverfield and Paranormal Activity, and movies with arguably more hype, like The Force Awakens or Avengers Infinity War. But The Blair Witch Project was different. It hit differently, and I want to share it with you. The year was 1998. I was 13 years old. Bill Clinton was president, and the Monica Lewinsky scandal was in the headlines. The price of gas was 106. Google was founded in September, and before that, most people used Yahoo, AltaVista, or Hotbot. My preferred search engine was Lycos, but I used Ask Jeeves a few times. I don't remember where I heard about the Blair Witch Project for the first time, or where I saw the first trailer, but at some point, people just started talking about these three college students from Maryland who disappeared in the woods while shooting a documentary in 1994 when I was in fourth grade. A search party produced their equipment and footage a year later, but the case had turned cold and the investigation hit a wall. So they decided to release the footage to the public in the form of a 90-minute feature film so that if anyone saw something or knew something, they could help police find the missing students. Saying it out loud in 2022 sounds insane, but in 1998 it was completely plausible. Unsolved Mysteries, which profiled unsolved crimes using missing persons cases and featuring reenactments, was in its 11th season. But the case of the missing students was unique because there was no need for reenactments since they had their own video footage of the events leading up to their disappearance. And most of the Unsolved Mysteries cases had leads or suspects or persons of interest, but the Blair Witch Project had none of that. It was like they just vanished off the face of the earth. But there was video evidence which was recorded for several days after they were reported missing. And the case had evidently been cold for five years. So the prospect that they would use the evidence they didn't have to reach out to the public for help solving the case wasn't completely ridiculous. In the 90s, the internet as we know it today was still in its infancy. The most popular web browser was Netscape. Only 41% of Americans had internet access in 1998, and half of them had it through AOL with software that came on a floppy disk. The only method of getting online was dial-up, and it had to go through your phone line, meaning if you wanted to get on the internet, you had to reconnect every time, and you couldn't be on the phone while you were using it unless you had a second phone line, which most people didn't. I was the first person in my class to get a second phone line for using the internet, and I remember talking to one of my classmates on the phone about a science project we were doing, and it felt so futuristic to be able to talk on the phone and use the internet while doing it, because such a thing had never been heard of before. Some radio stations let you stream audio on real player, and search engines often had headline news stories or news channels of the caliber you would expect from a news app on a smartwatch today. But there was no Wikipedia, and there were no fact checkers. And if you searched, is the Blair Witch Project real, the only results you got were the ones that existed in 1998, which weren't many. There were photos of missing persons posters, which I found a physical copy in my hometown in Idaho. Rotten Tomatoes started in August 1998, so it was still very basic, but IMDb had been around since 1990, and its page for the Blair Witch Project listed the actors as missing, presumed dead. So all the information available to us from a search engine led us to believe that the movie was the real deal, and some of us went further and further down the rabbit hole looking for answers. I remember the first time I saw The Blair Witch Project. I was one of the last people in my friend group to see it, and we all thought we were really seeing these college kids who were 10 years older than us in the last days of their lives. One of us obtained a phone number for a hotline, and a few of us called it from a payphone. I never called it because I was too nervous about what I would say if a real person answered because I know you're not supposed to make a fake call to the police. 
but apparently I took you to an answering machine that identified itself as the Bricketsville Police Department and asked people to drop any information they had about the missing students. I never called the number, but I used to frequent the website a lot, BlairWitch.com. I wanted to know everything there was to know about Ellie Kedward, an Irish woman who was banished from the town of Blair after several people accused her of witchcraft. Rustin Parr, a serial killer from the 1940s who was found guilty of murdering seven children in Bricketsville, Maryland on the supposed instructions of the Blair Witch, and everything else there was to know about Blair Witch Project lore. Someone asked me once, if the Blair Witch was real, wouldn't we have heard about it before 1999? Honestly, probably not. The Blair Witch was a local legend that would have had no reason to leave Maryland. I'm from Idaho, and we have local legends up here, like the Charlie Brown House. And did you know that Idaho has a sea monster? Then unless you were from here, you probably never would have heard of it. So no, until investigators chose to take it to the national level, people outside of Frederick County, Maryland probably would have never heard the legend of the Blair Witch. These are photos of Joshua Leonard's car, discovered by police on Black Rock Road. Notice the date, October 25th, 1994, which means that when police found his car, the students were still alive and would continue recording for five more days. These are evidence photos of 8mm tapes and 16mm film cans, as well as Heather Donahue's journal, all of which were discovered by anthropology students from the University of Maryland deliberately buried. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a tip. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that little bell in the corner to get notifications on more videos like this one.